Uh, good morning. By the time you watch this, it'll be Tuesday morning, and you'll be at the second of the PIP training seminars. Um, I can't be with you because I'm walking the cliff path in Cornwall um, on holiday, and I had a choice between going on holiday to Cornwall or being with you today, and unfortunately um, Cornwall won, but I hope you understand that. Um, th this is a really important uh, seminar. Um, inevitably, the police are going to come into contact with the public, and those circumstances will lead to death and serious injury cases. Thankfully, they're very rare in terms of the number of encounters we have with the public, but it is, of course, inevitable that force will occasionally be used or people will be injured as a result of encounters with the police. Um, the vast majority of those injuries, of course, take place outside of the firearms environment, and as the National League for Firearms, um, I can say that the uh, authorised professional practice in relation to farms is really well established. Um, we have a very good section in there on post-incident procedures that's been developed as a result of the learning from IPCC investigations, inquests, um, leading councils advice, work with the college, work with academics, global research, you name it. Um, so there's a lot of work has gone into creating the post-incident procedure um, guidance that we have within firearms and it really does represent international best practice. Um, if you take nothing else away from this college, and if you listen to nothing else I'm about to say, then please remember that the key is to absolutely apply our guidance. We have national guidance, it's in the APP, at the moment it only relates to firearms, I'll touch on that in a moment, but make sure if you do encounter a death or serious injury case, and you're involved in that, that you apply the APP. Um, we will not come out of it well if we do not apply our own guidance. Um, and we will be challenged, so please apply the APP. The IPCC, who I know are present in some numbers there, welcome to you, um, have produced their own guidance, the Section 22 guidance. Um, that has created some controversy. The, a the IPCC, they've consulted far and wide in relation to that um, particular document, and it's been sat in the Home Secretary's in-tray since 2014. To be fair to the IPCC, as I say, they have consulted, they've listened, and their guidance has moved on. But there is one remaining um, issue with it that, um, that we uh, challenge. Um, if you look at the APP when it talks about separation, um, we say that separation should take place, but only when it is safe to do so, operationally safe to do so, when it's practical to do so, because clearly it may not be practical depending on the circumstances, and most importantly when it's necessary to do so. So if there are other measures in place to prevent inappropriate conferring, such as the IPCC may be present observing the process, and of course they should be welcome to do so. There may be an appointed officer, there may have been body-worn video leading up to the, um, to the PIP suite. So there are a number of things that can be put in place to prevent inappropriate conferring. Um, and if those measures are in place, then why is it necessary to separate the officers? So the point in the APP is separate when necessary, but if unnecessary, why would you do it? Now separation does remain an issue, and it remains an issue in the Section 22 guidance, but clearly that hasn't been signed off. Um, and I would encourage you to absolutely, as I said a minute ago, and I reiterate, apply the APP in these cases. Um, I've already said that within firearms, post incident procedures is well established. Um, and to be fair to the IPCC, if you look at the um, recent history in relation to police shootings and DSI incidents involving police firearms officers, um, the, the post incident procedures have gone very well. And certainly from my interaction with the IPCC, talking to their investigators, um, they are very happy with the way that the post-incident procedure has gone, they're happy with the officers' stage three accounts, and I think we are in a good place when it comes to armed policing and post-incident procedures. Um, I'm touching wood here because um, long may that continue. But of course there is an issue outside of firearms. Most people that die or suffer injuries as a result of interaction with the police, um, that happens outside of firearms, whether it's in custody, in road traffic pursuits, during control and restraint incidents. So most of these incidents have nothing to do with armed policing. And it's there, it's that area where I think we're failing our officers, we're failing the public, and we're certainly not making the IPCC's life any easier for them. Um, and they are very keen that we roll out the best practice that we've developed in firearms beyond the armed policing environment. And, and I would encourage you to think about that as you go through your training seminar, because it's a hugely important piece of work. I know the college have it in hand, I'm working with them, We'll make it happen as soon as we can, but, uh, but we need to do it because ultimately, as I say, we're letting everybody down by not applying best practice outside of firearms. It's hugely important. Um, I'll shut up there because um, I'm sure you want to get on with your seminar. You've heard enough from me. 
Um, I'm wandering around the cliff path somewhere, probably in the pouring rain. Um, so I wish you all well. You've got a good mix there of forces, IPCC, Federation representatives, etc. Um, you're all doing a great job. Thank you very much. I shall get back to my holiday. Have a great seminar.